AMC, BlackBerry, GameStop, Nokia, to the moon, baby. Let's quit our jobs. Let's get a new car, Lamborghini. Let's get a yacht. Let's go party, baby. Let's go. Margarita's on the beach. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So the stock market was a bit shaky today. S&P 500 went down 2.5%. Dow Jones went down 2%. The Nasdaq 100 almost down 3%. And the Russell 2000 also went down almost 2% on the day and today we're going to be talking more about the markets breaking down some technicals going over seven stocks to buy now and i also want to share with you guys what i did today and maybe i didn't make crazy moves like the wall street bets guys but i did make a move that i do want to share with you guys today and we're also going to be talking about where my head is at overall as a trader and as an investor so if you guys find value hit the like button subscribe to the channel make sure to get yourself into the strive smart discord chat the facebook group get four stocks from weeble and 30 bucks from m1 finance all of those are free and linked right down below in the description box so let's get into it and it seems like we finally got the market pull down that I've definitely been waiting for. And I know many of you guys out there have been waiting for this as well. The markets are finally pulling back. The S&P 500 hit an all-time high a couple days ago at 38.70. And now today we closed at 37.50. That was down about 120 points from that high. And by no stretch of the imagination is this a very big pull back in fact guys it's only a 3.3 percent drop that's kind of funny i mean it's not much at all um it's only a 3.3 percent drop from the peak here from that all-time high and if i pull out this drawing tool and draw out this channel and i'm sure many of you guys remember this especially if you've been following me for a couple weeks we've been talking about this channel on the s p 500 it's been holding it on the four hour chart and with today's pull down we got exactly to the support of the channel right around 37 30 and we actually bounced off that low we bounced off that low at about 345 here on the east coast and we closed at 37 50 so that's a good sign that we're trying to hold the support of this channel it's not confirming quite yet we're not bouncing off quite yet but it's trying and another thing worth noting guys is if this this channel breaks let's say the S&P collapses under it I could easily see us going down maybe another 100 points, which would put us right around the 180 SMA here on the four-hour chart, right around 36.50. And honestly, the way I've positioned myself in my account and in other accounts as well, I'm pretty cash heavy. I'm about 50% in my trading account. So I'm ready for that and I'm down for it. I'm all for it, to be honest. So yeah, watch out for that collapse. We could drop maybe another 100 points on the S&P 500. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. And we also had, almost forgot, Jay Powell. He had a meeting today. We saw him speak live, take some questions. And overall, I mean, we didn't see much of anything new. The biggest takeaways, I would say, are that they're keeping the rates near zero, which is what they have been doing. We all know any spike in the rates that would devastate the markets. I mean, we saw what happened back in 2018 when they started to uh, pump up their rates a bit. So we know that if the rates go up, the market's going to you know, go down the stock market and the housing market. So they're keeping that at zero and they're maintaining their sizable asset purchases every month. And every month they're doing $120 billion in these asset purchases, 80 of that 120 being in treasuries, 80 billion, and 40 billion being in mortgage-backed securities. So that's pretty much all you need to really know 
and I do advise you guys, go watch that. It's about 40 minutes. Go watch it. Look at the Q&A. And they were asked a lot of good questions. We're not going to go into that in this video. Uh, but you guys, after this, should definitely go check that out. And overall, I mean, that's what happened today. Broad sell-off all across the board. Most stocks out there, except for a couple few, AMC, GameStop, Nokia. We'll talk about these later in this video. BlackBerry, you know, other than those, a lot of stocks were red. And for me, I didn't really do much today, guys. Like I've said, I mean, I've positioned myself well for a sell-off. I'm sitting in a good amount of cash, and I only ended up nibbling a little bit of a position today, of a stock today, rather, that went down. And I told you all, if this stock went down into the 190s, low 200s, I was looking to add into it. And I didn't get it at the bottom. I wish I did. I was pretty off, honestly, from the bottom. But I did pick up some Square today. We saw Square close down 3%. It was actually under 197, or not under 197 right around 197 which is where I wish I bought some but I actually ended up buying after it corrected here back up it snapped back up I bought at about 206.50 so I nibbled a very small amount and trust me guys I know it could go lower by no stretch of the imagination are we uh, uh, reversing quite yet we're not we're still on a downtrend on the 5 day 5 minute so I think on this 4 hour if we take out 200 maybe tomorrow to end this week maybe or, or maybe even next week if we break 200 and we go to 180 that's where I'd unload even more shares and on the way down to 180 I'd pick up a ton more shares right probably at 195 190 you know I'd buy at 185 ultimately I think square is a uh, is a 220 plus dollar stock 225 so these all these areas right here in my opinion are buying areas between 180 and 210 even 205 and I'm looking to pick it up and uh, that's what I did. That's all I did in terms of new buying today. I'm still in SBE. I have half of a position there. I'm still holding that. I'm also still holding Workhorse, which Workhorse did pretty well again today. It went up 8%, so I'm happy about that. NEO is another one I'm still in, and I don't think NEO did well today. Yeah, NEO went down 5%. It's right around my cost basis, which is not the best situation considering I did ride it up to about 64 i locked in some profits there on the uh, original half of the position but i'm still holding on to it i'm still in tattooed chef at 2450 which is pretty much at break even right now and you guys know i'm still in slv which is a silver play um for some uh you know exposure there to silver so what are you guys doing let me know down below in the comments as always i love talking to you guys let me know what you all are up to and now let's talk about some stocks and we know that this week is a big week and we still have more companies to report but in terms of big tech companies this is a big week we had apple report today microsoft was yesterday Facebook also reported today, and I want to talk about these companies here, Tesla as well. We're going to talk about some numbers and see exactly what they did. And starting off with number one is arguably, a lot of people ask me, Stas, what's your favorite company out there? I don't even know if I have one, but Apple is arguably my favorite one. It might be Apple. It might be Google. I really like Google. Um, I really have to think about that. I have to think about that and really narrow it down. If I were to only buy one stock, what would it be? And the truth is, I don't have an answer to that question. But anyway, Apple, they reported earnings today. And by the way, what do you guys think? What would you, if you could only buy one stock, what would it be? Drop a comment down below. I'd love to know. And now back to Apple. They reported earnings today, and we actually hit an all-time high. Was that today or was that yesterday? Let me double check. No, that was like 
Okay, no, that was like three days ago. They hit an all-time high. And ever since they hit that all-time high at 145, they've been struggling at that point. So that's a big resistance. And now they're actually down into the high 130s after they reported these earnings. And for my brief glance at the numbers, the earnings are pretty good. I mean, EPS came in at $1.68 versus $1.41 estimated. So they beat there. Revenue came in at at 111.4 billion versus 103 Point two billion estimated. So they beat revenue, they beat EPS, and in terms of all of their individual segments, right, iPhone, Mac, iPad, wearables, services, all of these beat as well. Well, I don't know if they all beat estimates, but what I could definitely tell you is, and we'll talk about that now, all of the numbers were a lot better than they were in the same quarter last year. So iPhone sales were 65.5 9 billion versus 55.95 billion same quarter last year. So 10 billion more dollars in revenue for the iPhone segment. Mac sales were 8.67 billion versus 7.16 billion last year. So nice jump in Mac sales. iPad sales were 8.43 billion versus 5.97 billion last year. So big jump for iPad sales. Wearables, home and accessories were 12.94 billion you might as well call it 13 billion versus 10.01 billion that's about a 25 30 percent increase there that's great and services were 15.76 billion versus 12.71 billion in the same quarter last year and we also got numbers here from all of their different markets we're talking europe we're talking China, we're talking Japan, and we can see those numbers right here on the live news tab. I'm not sure if you can see this or if my face is over it, but net sales in the Americas came in at 46.3 billion up from 41.36 billion year over year so that's good Europe came in at 27.3 billion up from 23.27 billion last year greater China came in and take a look at that China's growth was big China came in at 21.31 billion versus 13.57 billion year over year so that's that's a big jump in China. And Japan sales came in, if I can see this, um, at about uh, $8.28 billion versus um, about $6.2 billion last year. So you guys can see in all of the segments and all of the different regions around the world, there's growth year over year for Apple. And we're selling off a bit. I'm not too sure why. Sometimes we do see sell-offs when the earnings are pretty decent. That happens. It's not always like, okay, if a stock does well in earnings, it has to go up. It goes up, it goes down. It does whatever it wants pretty much, right guys? And in terms of Apple, we can see we're trading right around that 137, 138 level right now, which is that resistance from back in the end of August, beginning of September, and back in the end of this past year in 2020, end of December, we topped at about 138. So I'm interested in seeing what Apple's going to do here. Will it hold 137, 138, right around this 50 SMA on the four hour chart as well? I honestly think that could be a nice dip buy. Maybe if it breaks 135, though, be careful. It could be going low 130s, which could also be a decent dip to consider. But overall, hey, I'm pretty happy with those numbers, and I'm definitely going to dive deeper into this on my own time later and tomorrow for sure. But from a, from a brief glance, I'm happy with that, and I'm looking at a potential dip buy here on Apple. And Tesla, guys, TSLA, oh man, the mighty old Tesla, they also reported earnings, and EPS came a bit short. EPS came in at 80 cents versus a dollar one cent estimated. So they missed EPS by 21 cents. Revenue came in at $10.74 billion versus $10.32 billion. So they beat there on revenue. And Tesla Q4 production 
was at 179,757 vehicles, up 71% year over year. That's tremendous growth. And their Q4 deliveries were at 180,667. That was also up nicely, 61% year over year. So what are we seeing right now? We're seeing a bit of a sell-off here, and that's the brief numbers there um, from Tesla, but we're seeing a bit of a sell-off. And let me just redraw this. It seems like we are in some sort of channel right here. Can you guys see this? You know, resistance at about Um, 900, right around 900, 890, that's resistance. You guys can see even 880, that's where we got hit back in the beginning of January. And support is right around 800, 810, 820. And you can see even with today's sell-off after market hours, after the earnings report, we're actually still holding that 810, 820 level. In fact, we're rallying off of it. Now we're actually getting close to the mid 800s again. And this could easily, I mean, we've seen how how Tesla is. This could easily rebound tomorrow and be right back to 900. Not necessarily saying it is going to happen, but I'm just saying it's definitely possible with a company like Tesla, which sometimes it just moves up without even a big reason on why it's moving up. And uh, yeah, you know, we could see that. And at this point, again, we're in this channel, so watch out for it. That is ticker symbol TSLA. And uh, yeah, we could make some money from 850 to 900. That's about a five six percent potential for profit. So watch out for TSLA. Facebook is another one. Ticker symbol FB. They also reported earnings today. This one's been very volatile these past couple of hours. Starting um, this morning at 285, went down to 250 after market hours. That's a drop of 35 points in the in in a, in a day span, which is. Pretty Pretty, pretty volatile, like I said. And when it comes to their earnings, EPS came in at $3.88 versus $3.22. And revenue came in at $28.07 billion versus $26.43 billion estimated. And both of those were a beat. Pretty solid beat there for Facebook. And a big measure that a lot of people look at, a big number, should I say, is the daily Daily active users and for Q4, daily active users were up 11% year over year to 1.84 billion. And who knows? Did the CV affect this because people were at home? You know, Q4 and even the past couple quarters. You know, did CV affect their Facebook usage? It probably did. So we'll see if these growth rates of 10, 15% daily active users, if that continues to grow like that after, you know, we get out of this CV world that we're living in, um, we'll see how it goes. But overall, the stock, uh, it rebounded. It went from 250 to 270. Now it's at 272. And for me, guys, I'm looking at this more as a long play. If it could break 275, get to 280. I think at that point we could fill up to 280, 290. You know, I think overall 302, 305 is another big target here. So let's gain some momentum out of 275, out of 280. And then I think 290, 300 is coming next here in the short term on Facebook. And I'm looking to get a piece of that, no doubt about it. And Boeing was another company that reported today, ticker symbol BA they had EPS that was very bad. EPS came in at negative $14.65. And that was versus the dollar eighty in the red that was estimated. So they they missed very badly. But when it comes to their revenue, it wasn't nearly as bad. In fact, they actually beat the estimate. Revenue came in at $15.3 billion versus $15.07 billion. So not too bad there when it comes to that. And when it comes to the stock itself, the technicals, we're trading beautifully. And and with today's drop down 4%, we're still trading in it. We're trading in this channel, downwards channel on the four-hour chart. And based on this, 
Hey, I think 190, if you guys, hey, if you guys like downwards patterns, if this is something that you typically trade me, I don't really chase stocks like these. I don't play stocks like these, rather, for the most part. Maybe I'd consider it, but if you guys are looking at this and you're looking at 188, 190, the support of this channel as being a potential buying area for a rebound back up to maybe 200, 205, Hey, I'm with you on that. I'm looking at you and I'm like, hey, that's a pretty dang good idea. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm telling myself that since I'm talking to myself right now. Hey, Stas, that's a pretty good idea. You might want to look into that. And uh, yeah, maybe from 190 up to 205, 210, that could be anywhere from 7, 8, 9, 10% profit potential here on Boeing. That's only within this channel. Let's say if it breaks out of the channel, that's possible too, right? If it goes 210, 215, hey, this could go back up 230, 240. Who knows? That could be a, a big momentum push. Let's put it that way. So that's Boeing, ticker symbol BA. Now let's talk about Virgin Galactic. Guys, this stock, holy moly, talk about a short squeeze. So there's a website. It's called highshortinterest.com. And according to them, Virgin Galactic, their short interest is 81.5%, making them the second shortest, or rather the, the second most shorted stock in the stock market. We all know number one is GameStop, which we'll talk about here in a second. But today, Virgin Galactic went bananas. It closed up 10%. It closed at $46. And before that, it went up to almost $60. I literally had to do a double take when I saw my screen earlier in the day. I'm like, wait, wait, what? $59. This stock went intraday up 30% on that short squeeze. And you can see right after that, it uh, it collapsed a bit. And overall, it's still holding the uptrend, which, which leads me to believe, hey, there could be maybe another short squeeze coming. Who knows? As long as this uptrend is holding. And I'm super excited about it. I'm very happy about it because this is a stock that I've been tracking for about a year. It was uh, last February when I first got into uh, Virgin Galactic. Galactic. After it saw its initial spike up to about 40 bucks, it collapsed back in February. This is when I started watching it. And I traded it a bunch over um, the past couple of months. And we've been talking about how it could be a $100 stock one day. And uh, that, that looks like it's becoming more and more of a reality, especially as we broke out of that $40 level. We have the test flight coming up. You know, there's a lot of confidence around it. The, the, the safety precautions, you know, they're all in check. We have Richard Branson potentially flying up in the next couple of months, you know, all of these things are, are lining up. The shorts are realizing crap. This is, uh, it's, uh, hey, hey, might be time to cover. You know, the stock's going up. They're covering. It's squeezing. So this could easily be a $100 stock. I mean, we could get there. And me, I don't own any in my swing trading account. But don't get it twisted, guys. I own a long-term position in this at $18 per share. So on paper today, I made some good money. I made some good money on paper. Um, but when it comes to my trading account for income, that's how I make money, right? I trade stocks. Um, I didn't make any money on it today. But on paper, my long-term account, oops, I almost knocked my coffee over. <laughs> but on paper, I made some good money on Virgin Galactic today, and I'm sure a lot of you did as well. And again, don't forget, watch for this uptrend to continue. It's at a higher low here. This could easily be where um, we end up ripping again. And there, hey, we could catch a trade on it and make some income on it in the short term. So that's Virgin Galactic. Beyond Meat's another one. I forgot to mention it yesterday, and they actually combined forces with PepsiCo, which I'm super excited about. And they're looking to develop and distribute snacks and drinks made with plant-based protein as the plant-based trend gains even more traction. And we've talked about that before. That's a trend that I believe is here to last. And that's why I'm invested in companies 
like Tattooed Chef, although I'm not in a company or I'm not in Beyond Meat quite yet. Maybe I'll buy some. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for this plan-based trend. I think it's going to grow and it's here to stay. And with Pepsi, Beyond Meat, which already makes plan-based alternatives to beef and pork, they will have access at a global distribution and marketing powerhouse. That means Beyond Meat will be able to enter more categories and bring new products to market more quickly, according to a Beyond Meat spokesperson, and the U.S. joint venture may also include a future expansion into China and the UK, the spokesperson added. So I'm very happy about that. That's Beyond Meat, and you guys remember a couple days ago, we were calling it out at 145. Well, let's just say I missed that move. And uh, it's well above 145. It's trading at about 190 now, and it's down about 40 bucks from that 230 high it hit yesterday. So it's down about 16 percent. And you guys can see today it held 175. So this could still be a dip buy. It looks like momentum wants to push it higher. So hey, watch out for Beyond Meat. And now let's do a quick rundown on GameStop. We'll touch a little bit on Nokia, Wall Street Bets, AMC. Although I did make a video on it earlier, I'll link it down below in the description box. That video is more in depth, so go check it out. Although I did make a video, we're going to talk a little bit more about things I didn't mention in that video very quickly here. And one thing is with GameStop, ticker symbol GME, a lot of these, uh, there's two in particular. It was Melvin Capital and it was Citron. I read multiple articles. I'm sure you guys saw this as well. Citron and Melvin, they said that they closed all of their short position, meaning they covered all of their short position. And I call bluff, honestly. I don't believe that at all. I think that is a way that they're uh, they're trying to manipulate the retail investor. You guys have to be careful about that. I believe they're just saying that so the retail guys could be like, okay, now it's time for us to dump our shares, sell out, lock in the profits. That's going to drive the price down. And then these big institutions like Melvin, I'm sure there's many others, you know, Citrus. They're going to be like, okay, we tricked them. Now that they sold out, we're, we didn't really cover all of our short. We're going to cover the rest of it at a lower price so we don't lose as much money as we would have if the mania continued, if that makes sense any sense right so that is kind of what's going on now and we saw lo and behold another massive squeeze on GameStop today multiple from 230 pre-market to 370 it dropped back to 185 pre-market this is all pre-market guys it dropped to 185 and then it squeezed all the way up to 385 as the market opened dropped again at 270 squeezed back up to 385 and the way it closed the day I mean it didn't break 385 but it held 290 300 like a rock and this close in my opinion is pretty bullish and i'm not saying that the rally is uh there's a lot more left in the rally i don't know if it's going to go to a thousand 800 500 nobody knows but based on the close here i think there could be some more um upside and another big thing today was td ameritrade was actually restricting trading for gamestop and and AMC, as well as other names. I'm sure some of the other Wall Street bet stocks were in that list um, of restricted stocks. Amid a triple digit percentage surge in the price of those companies in recent days. So what do you guys think about that? They're restricting these stocks. And I heard that they were restricting, you know, certain moves, you know, certain option plays. Um, but you know, if they're restricting straight up buying and selling just shares, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. And even on Fidelity, and I'm sure you guys can relate. I mean, I saw you guys in the Discord chat. We were talking about it across other brokerages. It was pretty shaky. I mean, you know, Fidelity, I was having trouble executing an order in my long-term account, buying that square position. I was struggling a bit there, executing a limit order. You know, I saw people that use, you know, Robinhood, of course. <laughs> they were having trouble. I mean, nothing's new there. Um, I'm not a Robinhood hater, but we all know they've had a lot 
lot of trouble. And overall, it was it was a bit fishy. You know, there was a lot, you know, not working at the same time. That was pretty weird. And they mentioned that the reason why they, uh, you know, halted trading or, you know, restricted trading on GameStop, AMC, other stocks as well is because they're interested in mitigating risk for their company and their clients, and they put in several restrictions on some transactions. Okay, so that, yeah, that leads me to believe it might not be just for, you know, buying and selling. You might still be able to do that, but when it comes to certain option strategies, maybe you can't partake in those, and uh, that's pretty much what's going on. I'd love to know what you think down below in the comments. The other big names were AMC. AMC is... uh. Hovering right around 15 bucks today. I made a video on that yesterday when it was at about $5. I didn't know it was going to 5x overnight, but it did. You know, that's AMC right there for you guys. Nokia is another one. This one is uh, it's squeezed up to about 10. Now it's trading at about 650. You know, another big one. What's the other one? Blackberry, BB. This is one that also squeezed today, and it seems like it's holding the uptrend in the close or into the close of the market. So I'd watch that for tomorrow as a momentum play. So yeah, those are the Wall Street bet stocks, guys. And make sure to go check out my video from earlier. We go over all of this in more depth. You know, Wall Street bets versus mainstream media. GameStop, AMC, what all this means. I'll link that down below. Go check it out. And Visa is another stock that we'll talk more about tomorrow since they report earnings tomorrow. But this is one that went down 3.5% today. And it's down almost 30 bucks from its peak, down about 12%. And I'm very interested in maybe scooping up some Visa here in the short term. And like I said, I'm probably going to wait until tomorrow after they report earnings to get more clarity on that. But I'm very excited about it. That's ticker symbol V. So we'll wrap it up here, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure to get into that Strive Smart Discord chat, the Facebook group. Don't forget to also get four stocks from Weebly. Those are valued up to $1,600. All you have to do is deposit $100 and you get four free stocks. And you could also get 30 free bucks from M1 Finance. That's also linked down below. And all you have to do is simply open up an account, deposit any amount of money, and you get 30 bucks. And again, all of those are free and linked right down below in the description box. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, we're 37 minutes. It's in. I have to cut this video up a bit, but yeah, big video today. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. As always, peace out.